If you're like so many of us who second guess every other decision or feel stuck in a loop of bad choices, then you'll want to hear this. Prior to writing my book, I came up with a mix of rules to improve my decision making skills. So without further ado, here are the five golden rules of decision making that I can personally vouch for. One, check different perspectives. It's very important to gather viewpoints from various sources. It's tempting to only seek advice from people who think like you, but doing so limits your understanding and vision. Different perspectives offer us the chance to see the full picture and better understand the complexities of a situation. Example, when I was writing my book about self-mastery, I had decided to make the last third about religion. Because it is such an important part of mastering the self, I had originally wanted to write something completely different than what ended up in the book. Why? Because I went to Reddit and talked to many atheists and their points of view were eye-opening for me. I ended up writing what I answered them in my book and it really worked out. That would have not been possible if I had not seen their very different points of view. So what should you do? Find a way to get points of view that are completely different from yours. They can be family members or friends, but the further they are, the better, as they won't spare your feelings. This way, you get an unsolicited answer that will probably break your heart, but you'll end up wiser. I promise. 2. Recognize your biases. Cognitive biases are mental shortcuts that your brain uses to simplify complex problems. They're like the autocorrect of thinking. Sometimes they're helpful, but other times they can distort your view of the world. There are many types of biases such as confirmation bias, anchoring, overconfidence, and availability bias. Example. Imagine you're reading reviews about a movie you're excited to watch. If you're already expecting it to be great, you're more likely to pay attention to positive reviews and ignore the negative ones. Your brain is essentially cherry-picking information to support what you already know. Similarly, for the anchoring bias, it is the tendency to rely too much on the first piece of information you encounter. Imagine you see a shirt that's originally cost only $50, but is on sale for $30. You think, wow, I'm saving 20 bucks, but that $50 price point was an anchor. It made you feel as if you're getting a deal, but the shirt might not actually be worth $50 to begin with. Practical action. So how can you combat cognitive biases? One effective way is by stepping back to evaluate your thought process critically. Dig deep and see why you took that decision. This is especially useful if the decision was obviously bad and yet you didn't see that at the time. There is something that made you decide quickly. Find out what that is or you'll end up making more and more mistakes and never improving. 3. Understand the consequences. This may sound simple, but stay with me here. We all know that every decision has an outcome, either good or bad. So before pulling the trigger on any significant choice, make sure you've thought through the possible consequences. This doesn't mean just thinking about the immediate effects, but also the long-term ones. Example. You consider taking on a new job that pays more, but is far from home. Sure, the salary bump looks good right now, but what about the long hours you'll spend commuting? How will this affect your family life, your personal time, or even your mental well-being? Here's what to do about understanding consequences. Create an honest list of pros and cons, and don't be biased toward one or the other. Write down everything and make sure you are thorough. Then see if you're willing to deal with the cons and be realistic with yourself. Also, and this is where most fail, if possible, give yourself a few days to filter out any excitement or emotions that might influence your decision. Then, afterwards, choose logically. 4. Take your time but not too much. The fourth step is all about timing. It's a balancing act between making impulsive choices and overthinking it to the point of paralysis. Example, you fall in love with the first house you see and immediately pull the trigger without checking comparable houses in the area, and you end up regretting it because you didn't do your due diligence. On the flip side, you look at 50 houses and can't make up your mind and eventually end up losing all the houses. What to do? To strike the right balance, set yourself a decision-making deadline. This creates a sense of urgency, pushing you to gather the information you need, but not so quickly that you make a rash decision. 5. Reflect and adapt. Most people either do something or completely give up. Actually, the main differentiator of successful people is the fact that they reflect and adapt. Not give up after the first trial. After you've made a decision, it's crucial to assess how things are going. What worked, what didn't. Use the feedback to improve your future decision-making skills. Example, let's say you choose a diet that you ultimately couldn't stick with. Don't just abandon the goal of healthier eating, reassess to find a more suitable approach for you. What to do? Keep a decision journal. In it, write down the decisions you make, your reasoning at the time, and the eventual outcomes. Regularly review this journal to spot patterns or areas for improvement. Self-reflection is a powerful tool for becoming a better decision maker. If you've made it this far into the video, congratulations. Your attention spam is better than 99% of people. Now please go check this next. And thank you so very much for watching.